if you'd like it. Uh, he even has an enhanced hammer to cause some additional disruption. Just uh, the basically ideal start from Azul. And like we've been saying, Zork is a card that really two hits most things for a knockout. And a card that really tries to punish that is Kalisopod with multiple Acer rolls. Yeah, the whole kind of uh, gimmick of this deck is to be able to take a little bit of damage and then Ace Arola, which not only heals you and prevents your opponent from taking knockouts, but also you can send up another Glycopod and then it does more damage with first impression. Just that the Ace Arola uh, synergy is very, very strong here. Same thing with Guzma. And here we go. Azul Ultra Balls for the Garbotoxin Garboder and abilities will be shut off. If we saw Azul uh, play that Tapu Lele first, even though he already plays Supporter this turn, not a play you commonly see, but he knew that he was going to be turning Garbotoxin on uh, this turn, so he just wanted to use his abilities while he could. And there's an Enhanced Hammer, a big card in this matchup that Azul loves to see, and first impression dealing 120 damage to Tapu Lele, and really Azul's really dominating right now, and it's only turn two. Yeah, this is basically exactly what Azul planned for. Uh, He's, he had a great start, and then Rahul is definitely struggling here. Uh, so it's not, I don't think Azul could really ask for anything more. Yeah, and Roll on his side plays a Sycamore, discarding his hand of, I believe, five. That's a lot of resources that you don't want to take away. Yeah, we see uh, Rahul dropping his first Zorua onto the bench on what turn, it's turn three here. Just not, uh, not really putting a whole lot together. And the multi-switch coming out, it was kind of, like, you may think, like, well, why is he discarding the double colorless to retreat? <laughs> well, first off, it, it's going to probably get discarded with an enhanced hammer anyway. But multi-switch allows the Buzzwall to jet punch this turn so he can try to get a little bit more offense. Yeah, he did hit a jet punch for 60 thanks to that choice ban, putting some pressure on the uh, wind pot on the bench. But... Here we see this kind of interaction of, I'm going to retreat. This turnstile Glycopod. Yeah, my, my new Glycopod is here to do 120. All right, there we see a special charge putting back two double colorless for Raul. Yeah, one of the thing, one of the good cards in Raul's deck versus something like Enhanced Hammer is that special charge, just kind of giving him two extra copies of double colorless energy. So and the Enhanced Hammers don't hurt quite we, as badly. There we go, the Field Blower taking off the tool from the Garboder meaning he can actually wonder tag for supporter to try to get a little bit more setup. Yeah, uh, well-timed field blower there from Rahul. Uh, interesting to see what supporter he goes for here. Yeah, so, so I was going to say one common idea uh, might be, oh, actually he's just going to go ahead and throw the Bridget away. Yeah, it's kind of like too late. You're like, well, if I play Bridget yeah. now... Like... He has an N in his hand. Yeah, yeah. So I think he was kind of debating on, all right, well, I can play this Bridget, but it doesn't really actually like advance me all that much. Or I can play an N and draw six new cards, and hopefully I'll hit the, the Rock Ruff in another Zorua or something. And he does Ultra Ball for the Zorark too, so he will be able to trade as well this turn and maybe get, find a few more basics. You don't really want to play Lycanroc in this matchup, right? I don't think so, especially when he has, um, when Azul has uh, Garbotoxin. He, obviously, Bloodthirsty Eyes is a great ability if you can uh, and use wow. it. But there it's we certain... go. Two Zor was yeah, off that end. Who needs Bridget? A uh, no, little late, but. Yeah, Rahul doesn't need Bridget, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so the Lycan Rocket's a huge liability versus Glycopod. And now it's going to be some action on Azul to see if he can retreat or bring up this Glycopod somehow so he can do the full first impression damage. Yeah, this has actually been a really solid turn for Rahul. He started this turn without really much going on, and now he has his first Zorark up. He's actively trading. He's got two Zerua on the bench. He's, uh, he's definitely in a better position now. Stumbled a little bit uh, that may come back to haunt him, but he's definitely well in this game. It'll be big to see if Azul finds another tool to attach to that Garbo Garboder because Rule's turn will be really dependent on trade from Zorark. I see as a few in his hand as well. Yeah, again, we were talking a little bit earlier when we did the deck profile about how dependent this deck is on, all right, well, we can play some, you know, we can play some weird counts of cards, some more mediocre cards, just so we can uh, 
who can always trade them off. But when you are blocking trade, you can't do that, and that can lead to some really uh, awkward hands. There's the Acerola from Azul. Now he's going to be able to retreat to that Golisopod and deal the full 120 and take the knockout on the Buzzwall GX. Ooh, two Zorark GX coming to play. Yeah, I told you he had a lot of Zorark in hand. And thankfully for Rule, he didn't get that tool. So uh, yeah. he, he'll be able to trade and kind of find what he needs. Unfortunately, with all the stuff he's been trying to go through to set up, he's gone through three puzzle a time and not even be able to use one of them. Yeah, that uh, puzzle, this deck can be pretty reliant on puzzle of time in the late game. So that's going to be something that Rahul is going to have to think about. But wow, I love this play. Guzma on the Wimpod. And for those of you like, well, you need to switch. He has two Zorak in play. Yeah, he's just kind of shortcutting. Yeah, that was, that was a, a great play there to knock out this Wimpod. Uh, makes it so that uh, Azul will not have... Uh, access to another Glycepod. Next turn, the Glycepod that he does have already has damage on it. So a very heads-up play by Rule there, just saying, all right, I need to, this is only one prize, but I need to kind of stifle your setup as much as possible. Yeah, and now it kind of takes away the ability of Azul going Acerola my Glycepod and evolve it into the fresh Wimpod. Yeah, which is a common strategy of this deck, just trying to cycle through those Glycepods as much as possible. All right, there's an Ultra Ball, gets another Wimpod. He really needs more Glyspot in play. Those two Tapu Lele on the bench are kind of clogging things up a little bit. Yeah, we did see Rahul uh, put, uh, kind of debate putting down that Rock Ruff last turn. He ended. He did end up putting it down, just kind of saying, yeah, it's a risk, but the Bloodthirst DI is so strong that I might just need to take that risk, which I think is really interesting. All right, let's see what Azul can put together. He really doesn't want to attack with that Glyspot either because it will just get knocked out. So, yeah, he's attaching to the Tapu Lele. It'll do a good 80 damage to the Zorark, even more if he can find a Choice Band. Yeah, uh, doesn't want to offer up that Glyspot. It's not a great trade for him to just uh, get knocked out and have to still dig for a response next turn. So he's just saying, all right, this, this Tapu Lele is going to get in there, do some damage. Uh, Double colorless isn't super important. You're not gonna. You're unlikely to be able to knock it out anyway. And I'm just gonna try to soften you up to get a Goliath spot in there next turn. It is always dangerous when you end yourself to four early on in the game, though, because you run the risk of not drawing the cards you need. But there's an enhanced hammer, like we said, one of the main cards in this matchup, taking out the double colorless on the active Zorark. Unfortunately, it does lower your damage for Tapu Lele, but I think he's fine with that. Yeah, he, he would just much rather uh, prevent Rahul from attacking. The Enhanced Hammers are so strong versus this deck running uh, various lists, running seven to eight special energies. Uh, just one of the premier cards. And again, Azul did not find a tool for the Garbotoxin. So Raul is free to trade away anything he wants. Yeah, so I think, is that... Uh, I think this is Rahul's only DCE in the discard pile, though, right? Because he shuffled them back. Yeah, yeah he so. special charge early on in the game. Yeah, he still has uh, access to three of them. Rahul just checking the discard piles. This is something you'll see top players do, just kind of make sure, A, what have you played? What do I need to play around? Uh, ha probably right. counting Enhanced Hammer counts, if I had to guess. And then also checking his own, just to kind of remember what outs he has. And he, we see here, he does have the double colors in hand. So really, he's just trying to thin out his hand and looking for maybe even a Lycanroc GX to try to Bloodthirsty Eyes the Glyspot on the bench and take out all of the important attackers on Azul's side of the field. But no, he's going for the Wimpod. Okay. Yeah, making that same play uh, as last time. Just It's kind of the same rationale. The Wimpod doesn't have an energy on it, which the last one did. Uh, but it's just the same thing as saying your Glyspot already has damage on it. It's already going to... Uh, be more easily knocked out. I'm just going to cut you off of setting up and go down to an even number of prizes. Also, the max potion yeah. and the Tapu what Lele. A, what a turn from Arul. <laughs> he max potioned the Tapu Lele. He was able to enhance Tamer the double colors off the opposing Tapu Lele and take a knockout on the Wimpod and still leaving the Glycepod on the bench with 90 damage, forcing Azul to like, well, I can ace roll it, but then I won't have an attacker. Yeah, uh, just... Rahul started off this game on a bad on a bad foot, and now I think has just kind of pulled things back his way. Uh, that last turn was 
just un unreal for him. And uh, that, that's the power of Zorak. Yes, that is the power of just being able to trade, right? If uh, if things were going better for Azul, he would just have Garbotoxin online, trade would be cut off, and I wouldn't have been able to do basically any of that. Uh, but that just shows you how strong trade is and how important uh, keeping that Garbotoxin online is for Azul. And I'm still curious about Azul's hand after that end. I don't know if there's much really going on for him. He's definitely deep in the tank thinking right now. Yeah, he doesn't really have a good option here. He's not going to... Uh... Yeah, it might be just like a Guzma at first impression play or even just Guzma stall. But, okay, he's going to take the knockout. Yeah, he... I think it's smart to take the knockout here. Uh, put your... Go down to two prizes left. You just need one knockout at somewhere to win the game. This Galisopod is going to be dealt with either way. You can try to set up another one or try to set up a play maybe with uh, Tapu Lele. So I think Azul is just trying to dig for prizes there and put a little bit more pressure on Rahul. Yeah, like especially with his hand being so bad right now, he's like, okay, I need something from these prizes to try to get me out of this. I need more Wimpod in play. I need more Galisopod. I need a tool for Garbotoxin. Yeah, he just needs so much here we see that single puzzle of time like you said there are three in the discard pile so uh that last one isn't going to do much and there we go riot is speeding for the knockout on the glycopod azul is left with zero energy in play and no attackers as of right now <laughs> we're, going, we're going down to two prizes <laughs> man what a change of events that Zorark being able to go unchecked and just trade away and get Rule everything he needs. Yeah, Azul gonna check out the discard pile, kind of thinking like, man, how did this, uh, how did this happen? What, what where's, where are my tools? How can I turn Garbotoxin on? All right, there is the third enhanced hammer, I believe, from Azul. And one thing Rule kind of has to worry about is like, okay, I, couldn't really use my puzzles this game. I already used my special charge. I need to make sure I have these double colorless energy. Yeah, definitely. That's going to be kind of Rahul's uh, thinking from this point on is, all right, how can I conserve these resources? I need to be really careful on my energy drops. And Garbotoxin is back online. Finally, Azul finds a floatstone. Because even before, he just attached a choice band. And he has a choice band on the Tapu Lele now, so he will be able to deal a little bit more damage. And the second field blower from Rahul coming down. It's a big game. Turning off Garbotoxin again. Rahul definitely just wants to keep trading. And even Rahul uh, has the float stone to move this one out of the active, potentially attack with a bench Zorark. Uh, he's kind of just going off this turn. I think he's been going off for the past few turns. Yeah, like. he's kind of <laughs> just going off this game after what was a pretty slow start. And there's an N putting Azul down to two. This is not looking good. And of course, Rule doesn't really matter. He goes down to two. He's going to draw a bunch of cards anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's, again, one of the powers of Zorark is that it doesn't matter how many cards you have in your hand. One can turn into two, and then that can turn into three with another trade. It's just uh, you're, you're, you're very, very resilient to N. All right. And Rule is even setting up for trying to take the game next turn if Garbotoxin does not get active with a Bloodthirsty Eyes to try to knock out this Tapu Lele if nothing happens. Azul goes heavy balls for the Glycopod, but that's not really what he wants right now. He, yeah, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't, I don't think he'll be setting up another uh, Glycopod in this game. Just thinning his deck out, getting some relevant cards out of there. He definitely still can win this game but he has to try to target down that Zorark on the bench with 130 damage on it. All it would take would be a Guzma and a double colorless. But right. the end of two might spell disaster. Yeah, this will definitely doesn't have that in play. Now he's just kind of thinking about, or in his hand rather. I think his hand is double floatstone. Yeah, oh, wow. No, it's okay. So he's able to just kind of make a a stalling play here. 
Turning Garbo Toxin back on. And <laughs> their rule right. takes away the win condition from Azul. Acerola is the Zorark on the bench. There is now no damage on any Pokemon on the rule side of the field. And yeah, there's the Rhydus beating for the knockout. Yeah, a lot harder for Azul here. What really can he do? Uh, I don't... I just think, yeah, he just has to hope that nothing goes wrong here. Rhydus uh, beating 150. He's just kind of stalling. I don't think... Yeah, he's going to go ahead and concede. I don't think there's actually any way for him to win before Rahul there, unless, like, I guess he could draw another Enhanced Hammer and kind of keep Rahul off of energy, but Azul just scoops him up, so... Rahul takes game one after uh, what is, I think, a negative ma uh, bad matchup for him and what was a pretty bad start as well. Yeah, exactly. And I can't stress this enough, but Zorak GX, what a card. Just being able to have Rahul recover his setup and just go unchecked, he really just took over that game. Yeah, I think the key to that game was just uh, Azul's inability to keep Garbotoxin online. Uh, he just, that trade can just take over the game. You just bury your opponent card advantage. It's just, uh, if you can, if you just let your opponent trade for, you know, two to three times over the course of any amount of turns, you're just going to, you're going to have a very hard time winning. And I think that game would have played out very, very differently if Garbotoxin had been up that whole time. If Rahul, like that one turn where Rahul did all this stuff where he DCE'd and Enhanced Hammer and uh, Max Potion. Oh like, my gosh. I, 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 he drew maybe all of that off of trades. Like his yeah. hand, he, had, he only had a strong energy in hand with, with a bunch of other irrelevant cards, I believe, uh, when he started that turn. So if Garbotoxin had been up, he just wouldn't have been able to do that. And that was kind of the. Uh, one of the very important turns in that game. Yeah, it was two well-timed field blowers from Rahul, and that is why you play cards like that, is for Garbotoxin, and it's kind of seen a decline, but that's really what's helped him this game. All right, we saw a 1-1 one -one Glycephon line uh, in Azul's prizes, and... Oh, the multi-switch. Uh, the the multi-switch plays are not going to be uh, available to Rahul here. And we are off with Azul going first. All right, well, he at least gets the Ultra Ball for the Tapu Lele, for the Bridget. Again, that's what you want to see. But unfortunately, unless he has a Floatstone in hand, <laughs> he won't be able to get the Trubbish out of the active. And that's one thing you kind of want to do is, like, bring up the Tapu Coco because it has free retreat. Yeah, absolutely. Not going to be the ideal turn. Uh, for Azul here, unless, as you said, he Which, can move. I think the Tapu Koko was prized, too. Correct, it was. So, three Wimpods hit, Wimpods hit the field. For Azul. And, and there's the pass. The he chooses not to attach the energy because he doesn't want to try to have a bunch of damage on a Wimpod. Granted, it does have 70. I don't know if a Guzma and a Double Colors could take it take it out, but still, you want these Glide Spots to be damage-free. Yeah, there's just kind of no reason to commit the energy there. Uh, he doesn't want to open himself up to anything weird, and Glide Spot is usually attacking for one energy anyway. And there's the end and a pass from Rahul. Yeah, again, no wow. setup. He does have plenty of cards in his hand to play next turn, but no Zerua's on the bench, just nothing at all. Just has to pass the turn back. Yeah, his hand is full of Pokemon and supporters. He does have a Bridget for next turn if he chooses to, but even then, he still won't have an energy. And this is Azul's time to capitalize on this again. He gets the Glycopod and then plays a Sycamore. I think he discarded three Sycamore that turn, basically. So Ultra Ball away to Sycamore, and then play a Sycamore. Does he have a way to switch to get this Trubbish out of the active? I don't think so. These Float Zones have been really hard to find for Azul. Yeah, just has to pass the turn back and opening himself up and wow, to a Bridget. Rahul right. draws the double colorless, so he will be able to put some pressure on this Trubbish. And that's always great to think about when the worst thing against your deck is Garbotoxin. Yeah, so the Bridget, a turn too late here, but just completely fine. Uh, Rahul is very thankful that he didn't get first impression. He's very thankful to have, uh, to be able to play out this turn kind of pressure-free, as it were. 
And now we may see a similar thing to last game. You know, we saw Rahul kind of stumble in the early turns. And he says to pass the turn back. Yeah, he chooses not to attach the double colorless because of those four enhanced hammer from Azul. He'd yeah. rather use it for a Zorark or even just on the Tapu Lele, but trying to take a bigger hit on a Glycopod. And yeah, the double colorless are just too important. And we are going to see a first impression knockout on a Zerua after a, um, thanks to a Guzma here. Yeah, and there's the heavy ball getting the Garbotoxin Garboder. And I don't know if he was able to draw the tool this turn, but he still wants to get it out. Yeah, just no no tool to turn on Garbotoxin, but is going to take that knockout. Has a pretty beautiful setup so far. Yeah, that first impression, being able to dish out so much damage, 120 if it's brought to the active this turn for just a single grass energy. And there we see on rule side, Ultra Ball for the Zora GX. He will have access to trade this turn thanks to no tool on Azul's side of the field for Garbroder. And there is another Tapu Lele getting Professor Sycamore. Rahul definitely needs to find some more cards. Another Zorak would be great. He has yeah. the double colorless already. <laughs> I think similar to last game, he'd like to find another Zorark. Uh, a single rock ruff would be nice. But between this Professor Sycamore and trade, I imagine he'll uh, be able to find what he needs. But he actually doesn't find anything else, but he just has to attack and pass. There's the Enhanced Hammer, double colorless of Azul's own and an N. Wow, that was a great swing of things for Azul getting rid of all the energy on Rule's side of the field. And now he has the choice of even using Crossing Cut GX, where he can deal 150 damage and retreat to the bench, kind of saving this Golisopod from getting damaged even more. But now the main thing is, can he find the float zone? And he did! Garbotoxin is active, meaning Rahul will have to try to find Field Blower, but it is the top card in his hand! Man, this game is the, really swinging back the, and forth. The swings, there we go. There's the field blower. No more Garbotoxin. Rule is free to use all the abilities he'd like. And I think Azul actually went with Armor Press, the 100 damage reduced 20 next turn. Correct. Kind of preventing Rahul from even further trying to take a knockout on this Glycopod. The name of the game is basically, can Glycopod survive? Uh, yeah, he just is trying to save his GX attack and make it as hard as possible for Rahul here. Does Rahul have a double colorless? So after a couple trades, he did get a second puzzle of time. So he will be able to get double okay. colorless from the discard if he chooses to. It'll be interesting to see what else he chooses with it. He goes with the Tapu Lele, all right. There's a Wonder Tag getting those abilities in while he still can. And the there's the Professor Kukui. Does this add up to enough damage to take the knockout, though? Uh, 140? Minus 20 because of Armor Press. So 120. So 10 short. Does he have the Choice Band in his hand? He drew the fourth puzzle of time, I believe. But there's the Choice Band. And even after the armor press, Rahul will take the knockout on the Glycopod. And again, it's all thanks to the Field Blower getting rid of Float Zone off of Garboder. Yep, wow, Rahul is just, uh, his draws have been excellent this game. He, uh, his trades have been very, very nice for him. And he's also just been navigating it well. You know, he just, he saw the Lele Kikui taking the knockout, putting a lot of pressure uh, on Azul. Yeah, and even with Azul, he is forced to attach the energy to the active Tapu Lele just in case he doesn't get a way to retreat out of it. He still needs to find the Glycopod as well. Yeah, let's see what Azul can put together here. Here's an Ultra Ball, so he does have access to that Glycopod. I also see an Enhanced Hammer in his hand. Uh, no energy on the board, though, I don't believe, or who will besides that uh, one on the active. Enhanced Hammer is a tricky card to discard because Right now, it's not as useful because you will take the knockout on the Zoroark, but later on in the game, even next turn, it could be amazing. Yeah, he, he does end up going uh, for it. Just, I don't know what else is in his hand, but he's just kind of deciding. I believe it's like a grass and a N. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. Uh, energy are important, and obviously supporters are important as well. 
Uh, Azul does not have access to trade like Rahul does. And here's a first there impression. There we go. Retreat. Knockout. First impression. Putting Azul down to three prizes, to Rahul's four. One thing of note, Rahul only has this one Zork GX in play right now, but three Tapu Lele on the bench with the Rock Ruff. Azul consulting, or sorry, Rahul rather, consulting his discard pile. Seeing what his options are. And there Rahul trades away the Zorark. He's kind of like, well, I don't know if I could have time to set up another one. I'm all in on this last one. Decides to just play the Bridget out here. Uh, I think he has, he has a one Zorar left, I believe. Well, he has the, the Buzz Wall, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking about the Pokemon he could take. He just decides to take the Buzz Wall. And looking at his hand, it's not really much going for it right now. He only has that one puzzle of time. He still needs to draw the second one to be able to navigate around. And this is where, if Azul is able to draw another Enhanced Hammer, it'd be pretty great. But there's the end. Unfortunately for Azul, it's only putting him down to three cards. He doesn't have the ability to trade to try to replenish his hand. Yeah, this is one of the situations where this end is go it's very possibly going to hurt Azul a lot more than it hurts Rahul. Uh, the only way that it doesn't really is if uh, Azul can get a tool for Garboder, but again, he's drawing so few cards and ends just don't matter to Rahul while he has trade up. He does only have one copy of Zorak Jags in play, so he only has one trade, so that's something that, uh, you know, it's not quite, he can only draw two cards. It is possible that a lower end will lock him out, but it uh, looks like his hand is just fine this turn with an end of his, with an end of his own. Yeah, looking at Azul's hand, though, I don't see if there was anything much really merit. Ultra Ball, Heavy Ball, and the Grass Energy, and does not look. He's looking for that Glycopod, but I think it's still in the prizes. Wow, Man, this yeah. could be a rough beating. Azul's last Glycopod. And there it is. Wow, how heartbreaking. He was one prize card away from taking it. And unfortunately, with the way things are set up right now on the board, this glide spot's going down next turn. Yeah, it doesn't really have a whole lot going on after that. Uh, I don't, maybe he can, I guess he will draw it uh, next. Look at that, look at that first impression for 30. <laughs> the first wow, impression for so 30. Sad. It's nothing you want to do with this deck. You really hope for Floatstones and Guzmas and Acerolas to keep going. But with the way things have drawn for Azul, he's really on the back foot right now. Oh, absolutely. He needs to take another prize. Uh, somehow before he can even get that other Goliath spot out Where's of the Where's the Gladion? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know Azul plays one Rescue Stretcher, I believe. Uh, we can confirm that. So they're, I don't know what's in his discard pile, but they're, I don't know if he's already discarded or something, but he could uh, get that Goliath pod back next turn, potentially. So maybe, maybe things aren't as bad for Azul as we think, but He's definitely uh, on the back foot here. And their roll goes right as beating for the knockout. Now down to two prize cards. And I don't know what Azul can really put together. Maybe a few Tapu Lele attacks. Yeah, despite what we thought was going to be a bad matchup for Rahul, it seems like he has just been dominating both of these yeah, games. And there I see the one rescue stretcher is in his deck. And thanks to this Tapu Lele Wonder Tag, I believe he got Sycamore? Yeah, he did get a Sycamore, so he is going to be able to draw uh, what looks like a significant portion of his deck. Yeah, unfortunately for him, though, you kind of want to do Sycamore and N right now. You, you yes. really want to lower Rahul's hand size down, but you also need a lot more cards than three. Here we go. Seven. Right. What did he get? He did get the double colorless. He got a floatstone. And he has a choice band as well. This is a pretty good draw for him right now. Yeah, no rescue stretcher. Uh, but like you said, he does have a way to attack. He does have a way to turn on Garbotoxin. Tapu Lele might have to put in a ton of work to see if Azul can 
end up stealing the victory in game two in a matchup where his deck should be favored. Yeah, you see Azul taking some time here to think about how he's gonna orchestrate this turn and the next few turns, assuming the game goes that long. And there's the energy drive. He chooses not to attach the choice band, valuing it more on a glycopod if he has field access blower to up it. the top again. Wow. These field blowers have been perfect timing for Rahul. And now let's see what he can work out. Bloodthirsty Eyes might be an option for him to take out this Wimpod. Yeah, you can take out the one Wimpod as we've seen him do. Uh, as I'm doing game one twice, actually. If he can find... Uh, Even like a strong energy on the Buzzwall to take out the Wimpod with that. Yeah, that would be that would be nice too. Uh, Kikui Choice Band gets him the knockout in the game. So he's really looking for that last puzzle of time. Then. Yeah, just gonna gonna take a uh, Zorark off of this Ultra Ball. Not really any other option. It's definitely just trade fodder. Yeah, yeah, just and... trading it away does not find the puzzle time off that, but he does have the max potion and drew another double colorless, really limiting Azul, and now he really has to draw a rescue stretcher. Uh, yeah, now, I mean, now Azul has just bl basically blanked Azul's last turn. Uh, he's putting pressure on this type of Lele, making it so that he has a lot more outs to be able to knock it out. Doesn't need that choice ban Kikui play anymore. Uh, even, if he, even if Azul can retreat it after it takes his damage, uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes can bring it right back up, so... Rahul is fine here. All right, there's the Rydus beating on the Tapu Lele. 120 damage, 50 away from being knocked out. And action is back on Azul. Does he have access to try to find Rescue Stretcher in his deck? From his hand, I believe it's a bunch of Guzma. Uh, looking through Rahul's discard pile there, that is the only double colorless, I believe, that is in there. So he still has, uh, Rahul still has access to two of them. And there's an Ace of Rolla kind of delaying the win for Rahul, being able to get out another supporter. But is yeah. there even draw supporters in there? It's Ace of Rolla and Guzma left in his deck. Yeah, it just takes so another Ace of Rolla to kind of hopefully do the same play next turn. It looks like he really only has a couple more draws to try to find this rescue stretcher and even then he's still very far behind yeah, the rescue stretcher far from just wins him the game so i believe we're going to see a double colorless and an energy draft he chooses to attach the choice band to the garbatoxin and that is something very smart from him saving it last turn he's like okay well if he has the field blower at least i'll have a tool for next turn yeah definitely and there's the Enhanced Hammer on the Strong Energy, on the Benched Buzzwall, kind of taking away some of the options Rahul has. Yeah, uh, Azul just kind of realizing that if he's going to win this game, it's going to be because he deals with the Zorark, uh, wants to put damage on it, just getting rid of the energy on the uh, Buzzwall with the Enhanced Hammer. He could have, again, he could have gotten the DCE, gotten rid of the DCE on the Zorark, but just decides he doesn't want any tricky plays to come up with that Buzzwall. Roll just needs to take two more prizes to advance to 9-1-1. And he's so close, he could taste it right now. He really just needs to cobble together a few more attacks. But with only one Zorak GX in play, with 80 damage on it, no doubt, it will be a little bit harder for him. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's uh, going to be able to get rid of the Garbotoxin this turn, at least I don't think. Uh, he has gone through two field blowers, I believe. Especially knowing that Azul has a roll in hand where his attack this turn wouldn't really matter. So we see energy, basic fighting onto that Rock Ruff with a choice band. Yep. Using that last puzzle of time. Ooh, to see, not good news, honestly. Uh, couple energy and a rock rough yeah and that's I, I don't know if I don't think Rahul has a supporter in his hand he has a Guzma, he's just a Guzma. so he knows that the next three draws for him are not going to be great 
and without having the ability to trade, it's really dampering him right now. Thankfully for him, unless Azul finds that rescue stretcher, he's not really kind of threatening this Zorark for a knockout. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, Azul's play this turn, didn't see what he top decked, but is likely just the same as last turn. Uh, Azarola up the Tapu Lele, <coughs> Wonder Tag again, or sorry, not Wonder Tag, but Energy Drive again, but that puts him in a similar position. Uh, you know, he just kind of like does this turn over where, um, where Hul can still hit the Tapu Lele and then the pressure is back on Azul because Rahul only has two prizes remaining. Yeah, and there we go. Rahul attaches the strong oh, yeah. energy. Oh, he just has the... There we go. Dangerous Rogue GX taking the knockout that's the for knockout the game. And the match, right? He just had the Lycanroc in his hand. Rahul ready, wins the match in what is supposed to be an unfavorable matchup for him. You, you can see Rahul just like, man, I yeah, think I stole that.